Hey guys, in this video, you will learn more about the concept of variables and you will also learn about algorithms, how to write an algorithm and then we will look at how you can trace an al algorithm. So what is a variable? A variable is basically used to store information. So that's the basic reason for making use of variables. We want to store information. Think of a variable as a placeholder. And you should also take note that a variable can only store one value. When a second value is stored, the previous value is lost. So let's assume this is our placeholder. You generally give the placeholder a name, so the variable will have a name. For example, we'll call the variable num. We can then store a value into this placeholder. For example, we can store the value 10. That means that num has the value 10. If we then decide to store a second value in the same placeholder, then the previous value is lost, and then the new value is stored in this placeholder. Let's assume the new value is 20. So if I decide to say print the value of num, then the value printed is 20. The 10 is now lost from the placeholder. When you are naming these placeholders or variables, take note that the variable must start with a letter. We just want to follow some good naming principles so that when we start programming, these principles will apply and it will help us uh, at that time. So ensure that your variables start with a letter. Secondly, make sure your variables, they do not have any spaces. And also ensure that your variables don't have special characters like the hash uh, or the dollar sign. The one special character you can use is the underscore. So you could have a variable called num underscore one. Don't confuse the underscore with the dash. If you have num dash one, then that's not a valid variable name. The symbol here is called the underscore. So let's look at a few examples. Remember that a variable must start with a letter. It can have numbers, but it should not start with a number. So we can have a variable called num1, that's valid. We can also have a variable called num2, we can have a variable called cost one or ants for that matter. We could have a variable called ants underscore one. We could have a variable called ABC. You'll notice that this variable is more cryptic in the sense that it's not very meaningful. If you want to, you could have a variable called Zama, which may be your name. So when you are naming variables, try to ensure that you use meaningful variable names. It's not compulsory that your variables are meaningful. For example, ABC is a variable. You could even have a variable X. You could have a variable Y or variable Z. These are all different variables but they're not very meaningful names. So when you use them in your algorithm or even in a program, these variables at some stage are going to be difficult to work with. So at this stage, let's get into the habit of making use of variable names that are meaningful. These variable names are invalid. For example, num1. The problem here is you should not have a space. This is also invalid. Two num, we should not start with a number. 
The third one is invalid because we should not start, we should not have these symbols. The only special symbol that you should use is the underscore. And again, this is invalid because we're making use of a dash, which is not uh, allowed when we are naming variables. So these are some of valid and invalid variable names. Variables are ultimately used to store values. So let's look at how we go about storing values in a variable. In the first example, we are taking the variable num and we are storing the value 10 in it. And in this case, what happens? The 10 is stored in the variable num. So what happens is the value on the right hand side is transferred into the variable on the left hand side. In other words, you could say you've got a left hand side and you've got a right hand side and whatever you put on the right hand side is then taken into the variable on the left hand side. Your variable must be in your left hand side. I'm not saying that you can't use a variable on the right hand side. It can be done, but ultimately whatever value you get on the right hand side, that will be transferred into the left hand side. Let's look at the second example. Here, we are saying num equals 100. So again, the value on the right hand side goes into the variable on the left hand side. If you look at the first example, we had this placeholder called num. And we first put the value 10 into this variable num. And then in the second example, we then put the value 100 in the same placeholder. So the value 10 is lost and the value 100 is now stored in the variable num. In the third example, we are creating a different place, placeholder and this placeholder is called ants and we're taking the value 50 and we are putting it into the variable ants. The fourth example is ants1. It's similar to ants, but it's seen as being a different placeholder. So if we, if we draw another placeholder, this will be called ants1. And what are we putting into ants1? We are now taking the value of num. And if I go to my num placeholder, num has the value 100 and then I add one to it. So it's 100 plus one giving me 101 and that value is now stored in the ants variable or the placeholder called ants.